Hello, I'm Evangelist Biker McCurry, the Executive Director of Bible Tracks Incorporated and the host of this very program, the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. Today and this week on our program, we are going to confront a serious topic, something that all of us can use help with. And to do that, I'm going to enlist the help of someone, someone you may be familiar with, our founder, affectionately known as Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul Levine was the founder of Bible Tracks Incorporated all the way back in 1938. And through this week's broadcast, I'm going to introduce and ask him to share with us a message he preached many years ago. You see, Dr. Paul graduated to eternity in 1996, but the topic and the thrust, the intensity with which he preached this particular thought, we're talking about friends. We're going to ask you to look inside. We're going to ask you to consider yourself, to meditate for a little while on this very topic of friends. Dr. Paul is going to bring a powerful message to us in just a few moments. This was really brought about by the leading of the Lord, and I was speaking to an acquaintance, a longtime supporter of BTI and a longtime listener to this program, and he mentioned how much he appreciated the fact that we do our best to keep Dr. Paul Levine's legacy alive. I take it as a personal responsibility to reacquaint you with this great man, and I'm going to ask you, if you would, to open your ears and soften your hearts as he speaks to us. Let me introduce to you evangelist Dr. Paul Levine. He's to 2 Samuel chapter 13. <clears throat> While you're finding 2 Samuel chapter 13, I just want to remind you that uh, they forgot to tell you that tomorrow after the frog race for supper tomorrow for supper tomorrow night, we're going to have goulash. <laughs> Everybody got the place now? Second Samuel chapter 13. Okay, if you found it, if you haven't got it, help somebody help you. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel. Okay, let's all stand while we read some scripture. <clears throat> First verse. It came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. That's the Bible way of saying she was a cute little thing. She was a cute little number. A fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Now you've got two sons of David here. And Absalom is the full brother of Tamar, and Amnon is the half-brother uh, of uh, Tamar. Okay, and Amnon was so vexed, well, I forgot to read the, part, the last part of verse 1. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. All right, now, let's everybody get our thinking caps on and, and get a hold of what we're reading here. Here's a young man by the name of Amnon, possibly around 20 years of age, maybe still a teenager. But anyway, he had a half-sister, a pretty little girl. And the Bible says here that Amnon, the son of David, loved her. That is, he thought he loved her. I don't think he did, as we'll see a little later on. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. He knew it was wrong for him to have her. He knew that. He'd been taught. He knew. But now notice verse 3. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of uh, Shemir, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man, which means that uh, this fellow, Jonadab, was Amnon's cousin. All right, you still with me? <clears throat> know what we're reading about? We're reading about a fellow by the name of Amnon. He had a beautiful half-sister, Tamar. He wanted her. He knew it was wrong to have her. But he had a friend who was his cousin. And this friend's name was Jonadab. And he said unto him, that is Jonadab, and says to Amnon, why art thou being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, 
my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down upon thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it at her hand. So Amnon was a big dummy, and he listened to the advice of Jonadab. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house, and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. And she took flour, and kneaded it, and made cakes in, the, in his sight, and did bake the cakes. And she took a <clears throat> pan, and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. He acts like he's real hungry. Now he's not hungry anymore. He refused to eat. But Amnon said, Have out all men from me. And they went out, every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thy hand. And Tamar took the cakes which he had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them in, uh, brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her. And said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, <clears throat> whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Uh, I don't think that would have worked out either, but maybe she was trying to say something that would uh, enable her to get out of there some way. And uh, anyway, that's what she said. Verse 14, Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Now notice verse 15, Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. See, he didn't really love her. If he really loved her, that love wouldn't turn to hate that quickly. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise. Hey, on the, uh, listen, will you, buddy? <clears throat> and Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, there is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Notice verse, verse 14. He would not hearken unto her voice. Notice verse 16. He would not hearken unto her. Wouldn't listen to her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. Notice how mean he is now. Get this woman out of here. Bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of divers colors upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. She had a certain garment on which indicated that she was a virgin. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment. She tore this garment which told everybody that she was still a virgin. She rent her garment of divers colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. Now notice. And Absalom, her brother, this is her full brother now, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister, he is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of the story, but the rest of the story is this, young people. Absalom said, I'm going to get that guy. I'll get him. He's my half-brother, but he forced my sister, and I'll get him. 
And two years later, he threw a party, brought some wine in there, and he said to his servants, when you see Amnon marrying, having a big time, and, and after he's drunk a little wine, he's real happy, you go in there and you kill him. You stab him to death. And that's exactly what happened. And it was much sorrow and many tears and death and tragedy because of this sin. Now let's pray. Dear Lord, we pray as we look at this story for a little while tonight that you'll give us the ears of these young people and their hearts. And Lord, help them not just to listen to me, but help them to listen to you. And help them for one time in their life to say, I'm going to begin listening to the right people. And I'm going to listen to the right crowd. And I'm going to listen to the one that care about me. And I'm going to listen to the one who loves me. And I'm not going to be a fool and listen to wrong advice and wrong counsel. Hear our prayer. May these young people hear thy voice tonight. May many be saved. May many dedicate their lives to thee. May many turn from sin. May many make a decision tonight, a holy vow, that they are going to turn their backs on the wrong crowd and listen to those who love them and listen to thee. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Hello again. This is Michael McCurry to close out today's broadcast. It's readily apparent from Dr. Paul's fervor and intensity that he cares about young people. He preached at a teen camp for 40 years straight during his later years. He had a heart and desire to see the next generation go forward and do great things for God. But realize this, you and I, no matter our age or maturity level, we must be very careful about those whom we call friend and those whom we allow to influence us. Do you need to do an inventory of your friends? I know for me this was a convicting thought. Am I careful? Am I truly as careful as I should be about those for whom I go to counsel for whom I ask advice, Dr. Paul is going to continue this particular message throughout the remainder of the week. I'm going to ask you to tune in. Maybe, just maybe, you'd like to listen to it again on the Bible Tract Echoes podcast. Maybe you have a young person that needs to hear these words. Make sure you don't miss, as Dr. Paul shares with us on this topic of friends. Thank you so very much for listening. Greatly appreciate the fact that you would invest your time with us. God bless. You have a great day for his glory. And make sure, friend, make sure you listen throughout this week. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.